geography, travel, adventure, treasure. These are the things that come to mind when maps are mentioned. But that is not all that maps are for. Maps depict how people view their world at the time the map is made. Often, what is excluded is as telling as what is included in the map, in terms of what the cartographer deemed important. Maps then are symbols of dominion. They mark territorial boundaries, not just of lands owned by individuals, but of territories belonging to nations, charting not only physical boundaries, but also cultural and political spheres of influence. 500 years ago, 400 years ago, a cartographer was, a, 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 was really a powerful person. That was really important for a king, a kingdom to control the power, to control the maps. Above all, maps chart the rise and fall of nations, as territories are added or subtracted from these nations. As new discoveries are made, so too do these maps change. Maps provide us with materials for historical records and research, particularly in the history of civilization and science. And old maps assist us in illustrating the course of human history. A series of maps of one region arranged in chronological order can show vividly how it was discovered, explored by travelers, and described in detail. A series of maps, for example, of a coastal region or of a river estuary gives information as to the rate of changes in outline and the causes of these changes. The Philippine Islands appeared in different forms on ancient maps carried by Arab and Chinese traders, the earliest known of which is the map by Chu Su Pen in 1320. As there was no Philippine nation in ancient times, the islands in the archipelago were known by different names. Not until the Spaniards arrived, however, did the islands appear on a western map. Immediately after Magellan's expedition, the Philippines was placed on the map by European cartographers. Uh, the very first time an island of the Philippines appears is on a map of uh, Sebastian Munster uh, around 1550. Prior to the, to the discovery of the Philippines by Magellan, the Philippines did not exist at all in these early maps. No? After the discovery of the Philippines in 1529, uh, the islands of uh, Visayas and Medina slowly started to appear in maps. Luzon did not appear yet. It was only after the coming of Legazpi in the late uh, 16th century that the whole Philippine archipelago started to appear in maps. When was the first time that the name Philippines itself appeared on a map? It would be in the so-called Ramuzio Gastaldi map of uh, 1554, just 11 years after Ruy Lopez de Villalobos gave the name Filipina to the island of Samar or Leyte after the crown prince Philip of Spain. During colonization, the Spaniards explored the islands. They established villages, surveyed the land, and mapped their new territory. Finally, the King of Spain ordered that a complete map of the Philippines be made, and the Governor General of the islands knew just the right man for the task, a Jesuit cartographer named Father Pedro Murillo de Velarde. Father Murillo Velarde traveled around the colony, visiting different parishes and charting the terrain at the same time. In 1734, he finally published what has become the most well-known old map of the Philippines, with prints engraved by Nicolás de la Cruz Bagay and Francisco Suárez, both Filipinos. The first map, the large map, came out in 1734. Then eventually, uh, he came out with a smaller map of the Philippines again in 1744. We have here 
the 1760 edition of the 1734 map without the prints. It says there already uh, in French, the original was engraved by Nicolas Bagay de la Cruz and Injo Tagalog in 1760 in Manila. So uh, we should be proud of this map because it is engraved by a Filipino. Other maps soon followed. Each new discovery required new maps as the known areas of Spanish territory in the Philippines expanded. As Filipinos, we have to, we can only get pride of place by uh, appreciating uh, our country. And I think one way of appreciating it is precisely to be able to witness the emergence of the Philippines on the map. For a long time, however, there was no comprehensive bibliography of Philippine maps. Not until Carlos Quirino. Quirino was already well known as a biographer, having written the biographies of Manuel L. Quezon and Ramon Magsaysay. Not to mention the famous Rizal biography, The Great Malayan. His best work, however, was yet to come. Like all masterpieces, it was a labor of love. Carlos Quirino loved maps. In his boyhood, he began collecting maps of the Philippines, which no one else was interested in doing at the time. What started out as a hobby soon became an ambitious project as he strove to index all Philippine maps ever made. And uh, he decided to write a book because nobody else had written a book about Philippine, old Filipino maps, you know, from the 16th, 17th, 18th centuries. The first edition of Philippine cartography came out in 1959. Uh, it basically contains uh, a history of uh, map making, uh, map making uh, on the Philippines, and uh, also a uh, catalog, uh, a listing year by year of uh, the maps that Carlos Quirino uh, knew about. No one had ever done it before. Um, and when it came out, it really was a first, and it actually literally put the Philippines on the map. After the Philippine cartography book came out, he was actually invited uh, by the Royal Geographic Society of England. And you know, th that sort of society, um, you don't apply to that. You are invited after having uh, come out with some work on cartography. And so I guess that would be you know, the first award he got. Quirino was also director of the National Library and founding curator of the Ayala Museum and Iconographic Archives. After Philippine cartography, he would go on to write Lives of the Philippine Presidents, The Young Aguinaldo, and Filipinos at War. Philippine cartography, however, is considered his masterpiece. It was considered a trailblazer in the field and up to the present, it is the only definitive work on Philippine maps. More than just a compilation of maps, however, the book traces the emergence and development of a nation. Maps, to me, are truly magnificent works of art. If uh, you were to look at them, you can appreciate the work that these cartographers did. And you will also realize that in those days, uh, these maps were drawn by hand uh, and they were also painted individually by hand as well. So you can imagine the work that had to be done by these cartographers just to finish one map. Maps are not just aids for navigation. They reflect the eras in which they are created, as well as the beliefs of the cartographers who created them. Maps may also be symbolic acts of dominion, as they depict the extent of territorial sovereignty of governments. Maps can be many things. Above all, however, they are human representations of the world, and their accuracies and inaccuracies are due to the people who created them. One thing is certain, however. They are both images of beauty and vessels of power as much to be admired for the craftsmanship that created them as for the dominions they represent. 
and after this, we may never look at maps in quite the same way again.